Didn't even know that was coming. <sighs> In fact, you're on time. I, I almost dish, don't want to say that. I think it's also interesting that given the stress you mentioned, men live longer when they're married and I think women live longer single. So I can only understand it one person's wife in this room right at the moment. We're moving on, on time. See, I told you leakage was occurring. There's, I don't, I'm not shaming anybody, but planes need to be caught. We're now moving into the power of the hidden brain. Dr. Sanjay Rajav is Associate Professor at RMIT, Senior Lecturer at Monash University, Therapeutic Director at the Gawler Cancer Foundation, Senior Consultant Neurologist at Monash Medical Centre and Frankston Hospital, and Director at Dandenong Neurology. Every second week he takes a breath. Sanjay has a special interest in movement disorders and lifestyle medicine and fortunately for him with all of that work, He's developed a yoga and wellness program for Parkinson's patients and is a yoga fanatic himself. I'd ask you to welcome Sanjay now for the penultimate presentation of this year's conference, The Power of the Hidden Brain, Providing Answers to Unsolved Riddles. Uh, th really thanks, Mark, for a kind uh, introduction. Uh, look, uh, as Debbie Hamilton said before, I'm not sure whether she's still around, but some of the slides are overlapping, and I think that will be a good repetition because the topics are quite similar. So as we know, um, the power of hidden brain, which is the topic of, uh, given to me, uh, as we know, the gut plays the major role in almost all the systems of the body. And as Dr. Luis Viteta just said, that it's in the, in the main focus, and it, you can see it is in the center, and rest of the systems are governed by it. And it's not a new concept. This was known to the ancient medicine, both uh, Ayurveda, which is the Indian traditional medicine and the traditional Chinese medicine, that uh, gut has a major role. It has a big role, and it has also underlined its strong connection to the mind. So this was not just uh, the ancient medicine which talked about the role of gut with mind and the body, but also the father of modern medicine, 2,500 years back, Hippocrates said the same thing that all diseases begins in the gut. And so gut is a very major organ and it's just recently in the last couple of decades that we are knowing more about the role of gut in various disorders, especially the cognitive functions, mood disorders and other neurological disorders. Now what is a gut brain axis? I think we have discussed it and it's such a complex communication network between the gut and brain. But we should remember there are two main things which connects uh, gut to the brain in forms of nervous system. Previously, enteric nervous system or the nervous system inside the gut was considered part of only the uh, sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system, which is part of the autonomic nervous system. But now it's considered that it can work autonomously on its own. So it's part of the adrenergic system, but it's also autonomously doing its own work. And it's connected mainly through the vagus nerve, which is the only cranial nerve which is connecting to the gut. Uh, which is the parasympathetic mode, and the other one is sympathetic prevertebral ganglions. Then there are other complex pathways involved, which are immune activation, intestinal barrier function, enteroendocrine signaling, and these communications are bidirectional in both ways, and it involves neuroimmunoendocrine mediators. This is just a diagram to show how it works. So the brain is connected to the second brain, which is the enteric nervous system and they are connected through the vagus nerve and to the prevertebral ganglion. The whole enteric nervous system is inside the gut, inside the mucosa and submucosa in the form of mind trick plexus and submucous plexus. So if you look into the enteric nervous system, you can definitely call it a second brain because it has 500 million neurons. It is one two hundredth of the number of neurons in the brain which approximately has 100 billion neurons. It has five times as much neurons as in the spinal cord, which has 100 million neurons. And it's connected, as I said, to the central nervous system through the sympathetic nervous system, through prevertebral ganglion, and through the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the vagus nerve. And it can work on its own autonomously. This is what it looks like. So it is hidden inside the submucosal plexus, in the myentric plexus, and they are connected as we discussed to the central nervous system. 
Now, recently there is a role of, apart from the gut and brain enteric nervous system and the CNS, there's a role of microbes or microbiota, which is coming up in a very large way in the last decade or so. So the role of the gut is in modulating the brain function. It forms a crucial link in the bidirectional interaction between the intestine and the nervous system. Recognition of gut-brain axis implies that the GI tract and the microbes are involved either primarily or as a secondary effect in neurological and neuropsychiatric disorders. Now looking through the microbial flora, they are 100 trillion in number. In fact, the number of bacterial cells far outweighs the number of actual human cells. The gut flora have around 100 times as many genes in total as are there in the total of the human genome, and they weigh about two, or two to three kilos. This is the way the system works. So there's a gut-brain axis, which is comprises of neural and humoral system, and the microbiota are the probiotic targets which influences it through the gut system, through the enteric nervous system, and other neurotransmitters. Now the role of gut flora, some human gut microorganisms benefit the host by fermenting dietary fiber into short chain fatty acids, such as acetic acid and butyric acid, which are then absorbed by the host. So it helps in the absorption of the short chain fatty acids into a simple molecules. Intestinal bacteria also play a role in synthesizing vitamins like vitamin B and K, and it helps in metabolizing the bile acid, sterols, and xenobiotics. The systemic importance of these short chain fatty acids and other compounds are that they produce things like hormones and the gut flora itself appear to function like an endocrine organ. Dysregulation of the gut flora has been related with a host of inflammatory and autoimmune conditions which can affect brain indirectly. Now, looking through the gut-brain hypothesis, why it works, the basic hypothetical mechanism underlying all these disorders is that the neuroactive compounds derived from the intestinal lumen, if they get through the mucosa because of the leaky gut, they cross the blood-brain barrier and they can cause psychiatric, cognitive, and various behavioral disturbances. Now, this was a very interesting book, came about 20 years back. Uh, which talked about uh, the new term neurogastroenterology. There is a connection between the brain and the gut, and this was a quite widely acknowledged uh, work by Michael Gershon. Now, apart from digestion, it, the gut plays an important role in our physical and mental well-being, and we all know by the term gut feeling, we all come across. It can work both on its own or with, in conjunction with the brain, it, uh, which it is connected through various systems. Although we are not conscious of gut thinking all the time, but the enteric nervous system helps us sense environmental threats and then influences our response. And that's what Michael says, that a lot of information that the gut sends to the brain affects well-being and doesn't even come to our uh, consciousness. Now, the enteric nervous system, uh, we now know that is not just capable of autonomy, but also influences the brain. In fact, 90% of the signals which pass uh, through the vagus nerves not come from the above, but come from the enteric nervous system. So it regulates brain more than the brain regulates the enteric nervous system. It seems that a big part of our emotions are influenced by the nerves as we can feel like butterflies in the stomach when we have some anxiety or physiological stress response. Now, the enteric nervous system produces a lot of hormones and around 40 different neurotransmitters of the same class as found in the brain. It's very interesting to know that 50% of the dopamine, which plays a major role in Parkinson's disease, is produced in the gut. This is the pleasure and reward molecule, and it affects our physical sensations and our mood and personality. And the other amazing thing is that 95% of the serotonin is produced in the gut again, which is the feel-good molecule. Now, the nerve terminals of the vagal afferents are located in close proximity to the enterochromaffin cells, and these terminals express the serotonin-specific receptor. Now, the enterochromaffin cells have role in pain and immune response modulation, control of background emotions, and homeostasis because of serotonin. Now, this is very interesting to know that uh, stimulating vagal nerve can help in various uh, neurological disorders and uh, even in depression. So it is well known that vagal nerve stimulation can help with intractable epilepsy 
and there are a lot of studies done in this case, and it's now an established treatment for intractable epilepsy. Now, nerve signals sent from the gut to the brain do appear to affect mood as well, and research published indicates that stimulation of the vagus nerve can be an effective treatment for chronic depression, and there was a very nice article in British Journal of Psychiatry about 10 years back in which they took patients who were failed to respond to any treatment, had very refractory depression, and vagal nerve stimulation helped these patients in their mood. Now, recently, there is a lot of interest in chronic pain management, fibromyalgia, heart failure, obesity in vagal nerve stimulation and how it affects these disorders. Now, looking through the gut microbes, they have um, become our body superstar recently. There has been an explosion of research on the effect of gut microbes in all sorts of non-gastrointestinal disorders, including CNS diseases. And there are a few of them are Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, MS, chronic pain, autism, anxiety, depression, schizophrenia, even our motivation levels, and other higher cognitive functions. I think there's going to be a repeat of some slides. So this was shown by Debbie, and again, it shows how the gut brain microbiota you know, affects all these things. It affects uh, neurodegenerative disorders, which I'm going to talk about Alzheimer's, multiple sclerosis, and Parkinson's. Its effect on stress and further effect on depression and anxiety when things get worse. 